mainstream media and popular YouTubers have made it seem like both sides are equal. What state doesn't have the right to defend They've itself? misused language to misconstrue the situation. The word clash. So we thought enough is enough. Time to do something creative to get the real message out there. I, I like the sound of that. That's a gen, yeah. <laughs> So two weeks ago, we came up with the idea of hiring a screen on a van. We spent a good couple of days coming up with a nice slideshow with pictures and words that the media has been using and misconstruing. We self-funded it and collected funds from the people in the Dawa scene. But when it came to actually arranging one, no one wanted to let us use their van because of the cause we wanted to use it for. Alhamdulillah, one company finally did allow us to use it with the condition that we use their driver. That was another issue. Yeah, we didn't know if the driver was going to be supportive or not or leave us and drive off or just be against the whole thing. But Alhamdulillah, on the day we realized he's a chill guy and Alhamdulillah, he gave us no issues. Any luck? Toilet's closed. No way. <laughs> so Ali, myself, and hijab alongside two handsome cameramen got going. We arranged the meetup of the van with the screens and we started our journey outside the BBC studios. Being concerned citizens that we are, we wanted to help them do their job properly. Yes, that's right, because they've been misconstruing language a great deal. Security and police were swift to come to us and ask about what on earth we were doing there. But after we explained, they let us get on with it. Alright uh, guys, so you can see, there's clear tension. Then we drove to the Israeli embassy. Excuse me sir, you can't park here, yeah? Okay, okay, come. Yeah? Get out of here, yeah? Are we going? That's right, because these guys are responsible for whitewashing the crimes of the state of Israel. There we saw that a segment of the march was also taking place, which ended up being the biggest march, the biggest pro-Palestinian march in his in UK history, mate. Is there any more coming through, or is that the last one? So we wanted to park our van in front of the Israeli embassy so we consulted the security and the police who were there and they were actually surprisingly quite cooperative. Over here, yeah? Yeah, so it was really cool being a part of that. We met some of you guys there, conducted a few really cool interviews as well. United, here we stand. United, here we are. United together. United for a long. United, here we stand. United, here we are. United together. United for a long. United, here we stand. United, here we are. United together, united for a long, united here we stand, united here we are. That's your number one. Guys, I've just uh, switched cars now, I'm with the, the, the main man, yes. the legend, the lion, the big dog. He's leaving me hanging at the moment because he's too busy doing the shahada finger. Guys, so that's the van that we were in. These dons, uh, as you can see, we filmed outside BBC and now uh, where are we going now? Ilbit, isn't it? I don't know, I'm following the van. What? Yeah, so now we're going to Ilbit. These are where the drones are made that go to Israel. And we're gonna go and smash the opponent. Figuratively. Uh, figuratively, obviously, not doing the <laughs> job. Yeah. I look good, isn't it? Uh, this is a false. Uh, <laughs> I'm really lying. I'm really lying. <laughs> Fabrications. <laughs> yeah, there's a car behind, that's us. And you got the screen in front and you got the Dawood that is that is in front and yeah hopefully I'll be able to get some better reactions 
um, from here. Thereafter, we went to 77 Kingsway. Yes, that's one of the offices of Ilbit Systems. These guys give weapons, technology and drones to Israel. But there we found one guy that was hovering outside the door. After speaking to him and asking as to what his role was, he started getting aggressive. Yeah, that's right. There came actually a point where he came forward as if he wanted to start a fight. But why are you coming I'm to me looking intimidating? Like I see what you all do and I've been hearing about what you all do. I'm not having nothing to do with it. Oh, okay, okay. We already said that. Okay, 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 okay. We weren't sure. Are you security? Are you a random thug? But he turned out to be a random hired thug. No, don't touch me again. You understand that? Um, possibly by Ilbit Systems and uh, because security actually has protocol yeah they have to follow the law and they can get in trouble and lose their license so they just hired a thug and yeah we got a bit of footage outside which was quite interesting met a few nice people conducted a few really good interviews and then we were on our way yet again <laughs> Think about that. It's pretty, pretty out there. So then we went to Golders Green, which is predominantly a Jewish area. Yeah, seeing as we've conducted interviews everywhere and anti Semitism is, of course, on the rise, we wanted to go and just speak to a few Jewish people. But when we got there, it was rather strange. Yeah, people didn't want to speak to us. Look, they're all crossing the road. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'll be back the way, back the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to see post now. Yeah? Yeah, then the police came within two, three minutes. Okay. You can see we've, we've been out here for, for a few minutes. Police are already here. But when they saw our slideshow, they were like, all right, there's nothing really wrong with it. What are you guys doing? We said, look, we are here to speak to the Jewish community. That's, that's all we're doing. Yeah. People are blaming them unjustly, so we're here just to give them a chance to give their opinions and their side of the story. But uh, it turns out that I was on the other side, yeah, you got Ali Dawa and Hijab. You can see the footage that Ali collected on his channel and Muhammad Hijab on his channel. People said they didn't want to be recorded. How are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. You want to have a conversation? Yeah, yeah. Question? I don't want to be on camera. Okay. I, 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 what if I film the floor? No. So some didn't come forward. Some did come forward, so Muhammad Hijab did manage to speak to them. Uh, with myself, I was surrounded at one time with about 15 Jewish people. We were having a nice conversation, to be honest. Uh, I was a bit disappointed because I didn't get anybody that was sympathetic towards Palestinians. Yeah, most of them were giving excuses. Why, why don't you go to the Uyghurs? Or why, why don't you say this about Hamas? Or why don't you, 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 you? So I was a bit concerning, a bit disappointing. But again, I'm not one to label the entire Jewish community like that. There are other people that did stop um, nearby. The Muslims that live in the area, they, they stopped and they were listening as well. And yeah, we thought it was interesting. Yes, of course, the bit that where Muhammad Hijab was, there were people that were shouting some really concerning stuff. Oh, they kill themselves. You are blood thirst. You are blood. blood. You're, you're, blood. Fil you're filthy blooded creature. You're, you're not worth the dirt on my shoes. Dare you talk to me? You filthy little mudblood. That, as you know, you've got this Palestine and Israel thing going on. Naturally, rather than encouraging people to be hostile and angry, you come. Yeah, you come. You speak. You dialogue. Um, like there's no issue here. If somebody wants to stop, they stop. If somebody doesn't want to stop, they don't stop. Guys, you willing to have a chat? No? It's, we've just got a few facts on the screen. We didn't obviously get told what was going on. We just got told that a man was covered in, in something. Just out of interest, what did they say the van was covered in? Well, it was... Anti-Semitic? No, they didn't say that. Oh. They didn't say that much. Oh, okay. They just said it was Palestinian related. Like material, but obviously that's why... Is there a problem with that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. That's the whole idea we yeah, came yeah, to yeah. see what was happening. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're not going to judge the entire community, but the bit of the community that we saw 
was very worrying. After we left, we thought it was an interesting kind of end to the day. We went, had our food, lovely jubbly. But then a couple of days later, hijab ends up on Sunday times. The Jewish Chronicle quotes them as well, pretty much accusing of harassing them, which I was like, hang on a minute, going to these places, interviewing the people, is standard mate. There's lots of Jews here and we as Muslims, we have no problem with Jews per se, honestly we don't. In fact, we believe in the same prophets, we believe in Moses, we believe in Abraham, we believe in David, we believe in Solomon. However, there's something I want to say. And what I want to say to the people is, look, there's lots of bad things happening in the world, in Jerusalem, in the West Bank, in Israel, I want to call it that. But the way forward from this is discussion. We want to show the world that we can communicate with each other, that we can have dialogue with one another, that we can still show amicability to one another. That's what we're here for. We're not here to try and attack anybody. I'll be honest with you, because you guys, my cousins, I'm an Arab, you're a Jew. There's really nothing to be afraid of. We're just humans like you. We go to the toilet like you. We eat food like you. You don't need to be scared of us. All right, guys, so you heard it for yourself, yeah? But apparently, according to the media, Muhammad Hijab's speech was causing incitement, stirring up tensions, and as a result, our videos have been flagged to YouTube for causing harm to Muslim Jewish relations. What kind of world are we living in? We're living in the UK. We should be able to do this. People go to Muslim communities and do that. We don't say Islamophobia. Alhamdulillah, we're just finishing off the day and um, many people, they go to protests, but it's unfortunate that the one that we need to ask uh, for, for, for help, we don't. So as you can see, the brothers here, mashallah, we're... We've got Miss Salah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've got to pray Salah as well. They're on the side. Of course, we're told that the whole world has been made for Salah for us, so we can pray anywhere. So I'm going to jump in before somebody refutes me for, for not joining in. Anyway, it was a really nice experience. Mashallah. At the end of the day, we have the brothers here. Oh, it's mushroom here. Yeah, much mm. Rewarding ourselves at the end of a very productive. productive the comment, American journalist. Uh, I don't think anybody calls you that, but. Um, you see, I was smashed it. Yeah, mashallah. We found out today that speaking to Jews makes you anti-Semitic. Um, so that means that the Jew talking to me is, is an Islamophobe. Oh, okay. How would they know? Hijab, are you finishing that pasta, yeah? Oh, yeah. Is the pasta finished? It's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, finally. Somebody left that house. How wonderful. Two left home. 